Hurricane Aaron is no longer the Category 5 monster that we saw earlier in this week. But don't let that fool you. This storm is only getting larger, and its impacts will stretch across the entire East Coast. We're talking life-threatening rip currents, waves as high as 100 feet, storm surge in the Carolinas, and dangerous beach erosion. And in this forecast, we will break down what Aaron looks like right now, the timing of its impacts, and what you need to know if you live anywhere from Florida up through New England. As of the time of the recording of this video on Tuesday night, Aaron was a Category 2 hurricane with winds at 105 miles per hour. It was moving to the north-northwest at about 10 miles per hour. It is continuing to make that northerly turn, and by the time we wake up on our Wednesday, that storm should be moving directly due north, and it will eventually move to the north-northeast as it moves away from the U.S. mainland. However, we do have tropical storm watches being issued from parts of Virginia up to Delaware with tropical storm warnings for the North Carolina coast and those outer banks. While Aaron will not make a direct landfall to the United States, we will see significant impacts from its system. And here we can see it here on our satellite radar. We see it early on the day on Tuesday, but look at this western half of the storm. It is completely falling apart. That is what allowed Aaron to downgrade from a Category 4 storm when we recorded on Monday morning. And look, this western half of the storm was just sheared apart by those northwesterly uh, winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That helped it lose its eye just a little bit and helped it decrease in its intensity. However, the one thing that it didn't do was lessen its impact. Because what we see here is with our tropical storm probability map, the greatest chance of tropical storm winds extend not only from around the center of Hurricane Aaron, but they extend well out to the Bahamas. And as that storm moves up to the north and north-northeast, we're going to see those tropical storm force from most of North Carolina into Virginia. And even as it impacts and moves away on our Friday, we're going to see those tropical storm force winds out on Long Island, and especially out along parts of Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket Island before impacting the Canadian Maritime Province over the upcoming weekend. And that has prompted the National Hurricane Center to go ahead and issue rip current warnings, high chances of rip currents, all the way from the Florida southern coast up the eastern coast, all the way up through Long Island. And we have a moderate risk of rip currents from those Cape Cod Islands all the way up into the coast of Maine and Nova Scotia. We've already had significant water rescues up and down the east coast over the last 48 hours, with well over 100 water rescues being reported with the effects of Hurricane Aaron, which is still hundreds of miles offshore. The other big thing about as Aaron makes closer approach to the United States is that storm surge. We have storm surge from South Santee River up through Cape Lookout, as well as from Duck, North Carolina up to Chincoteague, of one to three feet of storm surge is possible as Her Aaron continues to make its way north and eventually out to sea. We have higher storm surge possible from Cape Lookout up through Duck, which does include those outer banks of North Carolina, where we can see storm surge of two to four feet with this system. But Aaron is continuing to move over warm waters. This is about where Aaron is right now. And the, that upwelling of the water has brought some of that colder water from beneath the water surface up to the top. And so we're seeing temperatures at the sea surface drop to about 27 degrees centigrade. But as Aaron continues to move, it's going to be in those warmer waters, 29, 30 degrees centigrade. That's going to help maintain its intensity until it makes that more northeasterly turn where we see those cooler waters out in the North Atlantic. That's going to make the system kind of lose its warm core and become extra tropical by the time we get to early next week. And we can kind of see that path of those cooler waters where Aaron has traveled, just north of Puerto Rico, north of the Leeward Islands. And we're going to watch for more systems to develop out across the Atlantic, but we will get to that a little bit later in this video. So here's a close-up view of our wind forecast as we go into our Wednesday. We're starting to see 20, 30 mile per hour in those outer banks with those reds. That's your 50 to 55 mile per hour wind gust as we go Wednesday into Thursday morning, into Thursday afternoon. But by Friday afternoon, all of that's moved out to sea and as Aaron continues to move away from the United States. On our satellite future radar map, Aaron starts to make that northerly turn. By the time we get to Wednesday night, it gets close to those outer banks, but then it starts to push out to sea at the 939 millibar low. And by the time we get to Friday morning, it is well out into the North Atlantic, moving away from the United States. And it's getting to those colder waters, and it's not able to maintain its intensity for that long. Here's another look of Aaron as with the strong winds. Here we have the core of those hurricane force winds. But look, along the coast, we're getting 55, 51 mile per hour gusts up towards New Jersey. And as we get toward Friday, that's what we're going to see along Long Island. 55, 60 degree or 60 mile per hour gust. And then as it moves out to sea, we really see that core of winds really become disorganized as the system starts to fall apart as it moves into those colder waters. Aaron's not the only system that we're watching. We're watching another system 
currently over the central southern Atlantic, moving in the same general path. But we see this system with a 60% chance of development over the next seven days. But it's going to turn a lot sooner out to sea. At least that's the thinking right now. Because what's going to happen? We're having a cold front that's moving through the southeastern part of the United States. That's going to pick up air and, and pull it out to sea. But over the weekend, and we'll get to this later, we're going to have yet another more powerful cold front that's going to sweep through the upper Great Lakes, through the southeast. And that's what's going to steer this next system out to sea and away from the United States. But even behind that, we have yet a third system that we are watching. And over the next seven days, it has about a 30% chance of development into a tropical system. But look at its orientation. It's heading a little more west-southwest with its trajectory. So if it can get down here into those warmer waters that the two previous systems haven't traveled through, we're going to watch this one to maybe enter into the Caribbean sometime as we get closer to the end of August. And once we get rid of Aaron, as Aaron continues to move offshore here, we're going to watch that ridge of warm weather across the central plains for at least a couple more days. We're getting some added cloud cover, some cooler weather, but look, we have a trough across the Canadian provinces, and that's going to dive south and east into the upper Great Lakes by the time we get to Friday, but really take hold Saturday into Sunday across the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley, eventually moving to the northeast. And as we get towards the beginning of next week, we start to see that next tropical system appear on the screen. But it's going to get steered out to sea because of that trough that is digging across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. That's going to provide for us the first taste of fall weather for most of the upper Great Lakes. And it's a sign of what's to come. The amount of daylight is getting shorter each day. And we're expecting that colder air to be building across the northern parts of the continent, way up north into the northern provinces of Canada. And we're going to see from time to time these little jabs start to make their way a little bit further south as we get further into September, into early October. And this is going to provide much cooler weather across this part of the country for this upcoming weekend. So let's put everything into motion, starting with our Wednesday. We're watching Aaron off the coast of North Carolina can turn and make its way out to sea. Elsewhere across the southeast through the Tennessee Valley, we're seeing scattered storms for most of Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday. We're watching a low-pressure system making its way across the Canadian provinces from Manitoba into Ontario, just south of Hudson Bay. That's bringing a lot of rain and unsettled weather to that part of the continent. And out across the Four Corners region, we're seeing some scattered showers. And as we begin a new work week, we're watching rain move across the southern central plains. The other big story is going to be our temperatures. So for our Wednesday, we have 100s surging well north through the Dakotas into eastern Montana, one teens out in the desert. But across the northeast, we're going to see a little bit with that passage of that cold front that happened on our Tuesday, a little bit pull back in our temperatures. Instead of the 80s and 90s, we're seeing prim primarily 70s and 80s across this part of the country. That's going to continue into our Thursday with warmth across the plains, triple digits, cool through the Great Lakes into the northeast. By the time we get to Sunday, this is where we really start to see that warm air being pushed well south. 100s for Louisiana and Arkansas and Oklahoma for Texas. One teens out in the deserts, even one teens up through the interior of California. And that warmth really being pushed up into Washington State, where across the northern tier, we could have highs in the mid-50s for parts of the UP and northern Minnesota for our Sunday. 60s across Minnesota and Wisconsin, even down into Iowa. And that's not the extent of it. That cool air then moves into the Great Lakes for our Monday, with high temperatures struggling to get to 70 degrees for most of the Great Lakes. The real warmth down along the coast and up the east coast, where we see temperatures in the 80s and 90s. And out across the west, that ridge continues to, to bring in dry conditions with temperatures surging to 102 for Washington State. With these temperatures, not only do we have the cooler daytime highs, but we're starting to see those 40s and even some isolated 30s could be found across the Canadian provinces over this weekend, Saturday night into Sunday night. But as we get into our Monday, we wake up to begin the new work week. We're seeing widespread 40s from Minnesota to Iowa, Wisconsin, even into eastern Nebraska. I wouldn't be surprised to see many areas here, especially up in those colder areas like Ely, Minnesota, Hibbing, Minnesota, Rhinelander, Wisconsin. You could be in the upper 30 to begin the new work week. The real warm temperatures at night, 70s, they're pushed well far to the south for the start of the new work week. And this pattern is going to continue as we make our way to start the new month of September. The last week of August is going to feature much below normal temperatures across the eastern two-thirds of the United States, with really the above normal temperatures being pushed down into Florida, to Texas, with that ridge out west and that trough across the eastern half, we're going to see above normal temperatures for the Pacific Northwest. But it's also going to be dry. So it's going to be cool and dry here across the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. We're going to see a monsoon flow return to New Mexico and western Texas. That's going to give you above normal precipitation. And that's going to continue up into the Intermountain West through Idaho, Oregon, and Washington State. To wrap it up, Hurricane Aaron is weakening, but it is growing in size. And to make it more dangerous for the East Coast, we're going to worry about those huge waves, that storm surge. 
those are going to be your big threats. But we're also watching two other systems that are following close behind. So don't swim if the flags are up. If you're at the beach, pay attention because those rip currents will be strong. You will swim at your own risk along most beaches across the eastern coast of the United States. We'll have more updates on Aaron later in this week. And what are those next two tropical systems? What are they up to? And that first taste of fall for the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. We will have the latest with our next video on Friday. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell notification icon so you know when we have our next video. Stay safe, and I'll see you in our next video.